am most excited about the dashboard and the instant feedback that I get, that my students get, um, to show where, where they're not understanding certain things, um, both for themselves and for me, so that I can help them and they can recognize their areas that they, they need to improve. And I think Khan has done a great job in making it a very user-friendly dashboard. Using the data, um, I can break students into groups. Um, I can target students who are specifically um, struggling in certain areas. I can also see students um, as a whole, like if, for instance, the class completes a module um, on like least common multiple and they've all mastered it before I introduce in the class, then I know, hey, this isn't something I need to spend as much time on. So as a teacher, it's freed up learning time for me to use time more efficiently. It's so right there and immediate. It's a quick picture of where students are at, where they are having issues, where their struggles are. I know who I need to visit with and where I can help them, where I can come alongside and remediate and support. I've gotten emails from parents that said, they're having trouble on the homework. And I can go back, find the exact problems they're having issues with, and plan my lesson for the next morning with that child. So my teaching is more informed and more targeted. It just sets your bar higher of what you should be planning for your students. When you get all that data that's really easy to access, it pushes you to say, maybe this lesson that I thought was good for my whole class is only good for 20% of my class. I should go back and think about what I'm really asking my students to do. The last two years, incoming freshmen Average score on an algebra pre-assessment, 17%. Exactly the same. Last year's class did not use Khan. This year's class uses Khan. Same lecture, same teacher. As brilliant as we are, we haven't really changed. Khan is the changing factor here. And our scores have been much higher. The average last year was 37%. The average this year, 72%. I was excited for my kids because I saw that, again, as being a tool for them that ultimately would um, help them become responsible for their own learning. Um, in, a, in a classroom, in a math classroom, where you're asking kids to get working on whatever, and you know, a bunch of people are going to be doing something else, and a bunch of people are going to be kind of half, sort of doing something. When I have them do con um, to practice something that they've just learned or uh, to work on some mastery challenges just to, um, to, to get things flowing, they do it. Um, and that's, that's awesome. I didn't. I, didn't I thought either. it was completely I, math. <laughs> I thought, like, I've done uh, coding in the past with, like, my dad and my sister on con, and I just thought it was, like, math and coding, that's it. But I had no idea that it was also history. Mm. Okay. And like there's multiple subjects other than that. Yeah, like I saw there's like science mm -hmm. and bit. art and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, what? I had no idea about that. Um, I liked the questions. I like how there's a lot of them in one section. So you really mm -hmm. get to see if you know the material that you're learning about. Right. And I feel like the questions themselves sometimes could be a little bit lengthy and a little bit unconcise. Yeah. And like, I felt really confident in the ones that we had already been learning about because I was like, oh sweet, I know this, I got it right, woohoo. But then for the ones that we hadn't learned yet, or ones that I had, we had learned but I kind of forgot, I was like, oh, this is going to like affect the total like percentage That's or something. That's true. Yeah. And, so but, you do think about the um, total outcome as well. Mm -hmm. So it's more like you do want to get the questions right because there's like an incentive to getting them right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. even when you're guessing, you really look for an educated guess to get the sure. right answer. Right. Mm -hmm. and my personal experience with the one time that we used it, is that after I took the 30 question test or whatever it was, um, I wasn't satisfied with my final score, so I went back and I got like 98% when I went back because I remembered the questions I had gotten wrong. And it makes you go back and keep doing the questions until you get them right.
it's a tremendous impact actually that I'm seeing through Khan Academy. The most impact I see are for those kids who really need the challenge. And I also see the spark in the kids who've struggled, who in a whole group math lesson can appear to be lost and then shy and then try to hide. And now they can hide behind their computer screen, so to speak, and continue to work at their own pace. A lot of students are very cognizant of where they are in relation to their peers. Some of them won't want to appear smarter. Some won't want to appear slower. Those students will hesitate to ask questions. They just want to be right there in the middle. Teaching to the middle only does the middle good. And you see, it seems like you're leaving out two thirds of the class that way. And so there has to be a better way to do it. Khan Academy offers an assessment piece that's incredible. It's so right there and immediate. It's a quick picture of where students are at, where they are having issues, where their struggles are. So I know who I need to visit with and where I can help them, where I can come alongside and remediate and support. They love those aha moments where they can be the teacher and they can tell me about something that they think I don't know how to do. My students select weekly goals for themselves based on their own data, so I have them looking at their own data now. In a graphic way, they're able to visualize in a very concrete way their progress. You know, usually you just move through a math classroom, it's like, okay, yeah, we finished this chapter, we finished that book, but the kids don't really see everything that they've accomplished and this lets them see it and it makes it real for them. And then at that point I was excited for my kids because I saw that again as being a tool for them that ultimately would uh, help them become responsible for their own learning and deciding hey this is where I need work. The kids are enjoying it because it's very engaging for them. I'm enjoying it because my kids do, my students do. Kids go home excited about math and that's what parents see. They see that Kids are talking about math, they're discussing what they did in class, they're showing them something on the computer that they just learned how to do. Parents know their kids better than anyone, so they can encounter a Khan Academy problem if they're working through it with their child. They can say, hey, remember when we were at the beach and we did this, and this is what was involved. And so they can really help me tie these new concepts to previous learning if they get involved with their kids with the Khan Academy at home. Math. I always found after teaching for 21 years, kids love it or kids don't or don't love it. And now I think I've got 27 kids in my class who can at some point during the day say, hey, I, I love math. Learning should not stop past the formative school years and through programs like the Khan Academy, this continuing of our education can occur. Adults who have taken it upon themselves to continue their education may now access free resources like Khan Academy to continue to educate themselves, allowing not just traditional students, but also adult learners to keep up with our rapidly changing world. On this, Sal says, there was a deep need to help educate people of all ages regarding the ever-changing dynamics of the world around them. With the world becoming more and more complex, true democracy, not to mention peace of mind, was at risk if average folks couldn't understand what was happening and why. This realization in turn led to an even more basic question about the artificial boundaries of formal education. Why does education stop at some point? Why isn't it lifelong? Doesn't it seem arbitrary and in fact a little tragic that we invest so much in learning through formal education for 12 or 16 or 20 years and then just turn off the spigot when we reach full adulthood?